This is the 14th annual Flanagan Lecture sponsored by the Center for Practical Bioethics and joining us now is the namesake for this lecture, Sister Rosemary Flanagan. Uh, Rosemary, 14 years, can you believe it? No. In 1992, when I had uh, decided to hang up the chalk at Rockhurst, Myra Christopher asked me what I, wanted, what I was going to do when I retired and I said, Myra, I was 65 then. I still had good health, and most up here was working. And I said to her, Myra, what does an old nun do who has spent 42 years in the classroom? I said, I'm going to be a lady librarian. I had been taking library science courses. I hated them. <clears throat> Myra said, I shall save library patrons from you, and because I'm so loud, and so she invited me to come to the center. So we graduated our, my last class at Rockhurst in May of 92, and I came here on June. With the, over the 14 years, uh, quite a list of speakers oh, over the years. Oh, we've had a wonderful program. Now, that was 92. That was my, my beginning with the center. When, after I'd been there uh, 14 years ago, Myra asked her board at the center and then asked the St. Joseph Health Center Board if um, they would jointly sponsor a, um, a lecture series for the Kansas City area, always free, so we bring this the best people in here. And the crowd's been growing, and we've had 14 years of wonderful speakers. I was thinking when I was preparing my few remarks for uh, to introduce Dr. Schroeder um, uh, uh, tonight. <clears throat> Two years ago, we had Emily Friedman. Emily tried to foresee what healthcare in the United States would be 30 years from now if we didn't do anything, and it's chaotic. The year before that, we had had Ed Pellegrino. Now, Dr. Pellegrino is the head of the President's Commission, and he is getting into this whole health care reform discussion. And so, uh, oh, and then we had uh, Ezekiel Emanuel, who though he didn't talk to us on health care reform last year, he talked to us on ethics in um, uh, the event of a catastrophe. But his, his recent uh, writings and his thinking is on health care reform. So we've had just a bunch of really good people. Now, we, what do you hope as a teacher? I won't call you a retired teacher because you're still a teacher. <laughs> what what do would you I ho hope that, that this group tonight would, would go away with? Well, in just any of these lectures, it seems like uh, yes. you, you have yes. a hope that they go away with yes. something, right? If you spend your whole life teaching, Laurel, you hope that maybe what people learn makes an effect on their lives. It doesn't always. We have lots of very smart, very awful people in the world. But if you can, and we've had, we've had topics, we've had topics ranging from the, the history of the bioethics movement here in Kansas City, uh, from our own Hans Ofelman, we've had, uh, uh, we've had scenarios of ethics in the, the physician's office, which was just excellent. They were prepared by Robert Potter. We've had uh, lectures on ethics as it moves into the 21st century from my good friend, uh, Bill LaCroix. And then we've had like um, uh, 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 informed consent. What's happening to informed consent in medicine? So we've ranged around in every single instance. I hope everybody leaves here before they go to bed that they will think how has what I've learned tonight, how can that make me a better person? And without that, yeah. it's, not, it's not even worth all the having a reception. <laughs> now, the center is raising $3 million to no. establish a chair in oh. your honor. Now, you said more than once that you feel very humbled by oh, that, humbled. and I'm sure you are. Oh, my heavenly stars, yes. We have such good friends at the center, and of course, I'm reaping all the benefit of that. But it would be wonderful. The center now has Dr. John Lantos, pediatrician, doing pediatric palliative care. We've just added our newest staff member, 
in Bill Colby, lawyer for the Crusans, with all the knowledge of the law and end of life that that bill has. We have John Carney, who probably understands hospice and palliative care better than anybody in the country. Now, what we need at the center is a full-time philosopher who can engage people who also can see the connection between what they know and who they are, and I'm hoping for that. And that person ideally will be trained and mentored by you so well, that they're, 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 what, what you bring to the table is brought to dead. the next generations. You won't be dead. <laughs> oh, it, it, it would be nice if I could do something. With, but he or she will bring a style uniquely his or her own. And I encourage that. And a background. I have so little background in this arcane science of health care. And I've learned so much on the job, learned mostly from Myra, because Myra, Christopher, and I would get in a car and take somebody else, Hans or Bill Bartholomew, and we'd go out to small hospitals in rural Missouri and Kansas and teach their ethics committees. And I learned so much from those people that have. It helped me immeasurably. And you've helped very many people in your role at the center well, as well. Well, I, I hope that I've helped a few. Okay. Sister Rosemary Flanagan, thank you very much. Thank you, Laurel, dear.